everyone, welcome back to the channel. I might only get a few minutes before another train comes. This track in that runs through Flagstaff. Now, I'm not knowledgeable on this line. I know Amtrak runs through here, but freight trains run through their dozens on this line every day. And I wonder where it comes from. Probably somewhere in California on the coast delivering freight across the country from, from there. So that's my guess. Anyway, on the topic of today's video, I wanted to talk about something that I actually didn't think I was going to make a video on. And that being a bicycle, let alone any bicycle. This bicycle was an $80 purchase I made off of Marketplace. It's a Jamis Dakar Pro. I think they made these around 96. Now, of course, some people may be uh, saying, why are you making a video on a bicycle? And if you are one of those people asking the question, well, basically, I like all bikes. And I used to be far more of a cyclist. And I was only a cyclist before I could drive, of course. And I am only 21, so it wasn't horribly long ago when I was just biking everywhere around Dallas and Fort Worth and all that. And that's where I used to live, where I got my driver's license, or at least up to that point. And this was a few weeks ago, and I have not regretted this purchase at all. I already did around six miles today, and I've been really loving biking on this thing. Obviously $80. I could have gotten a used Walmart bike, but I'm surprised I got this thing. And to be honest, I would rather have an older but better bike than a newer but shittier bike. Because this isn't quite as low end as a Walmart. Now I know this is not top end, this is not like a Santa Cruz Fazari or something like that, but it's so much better than a Walmart bike in every way in my opinion. The suspension, is much better than an equivalent full suspension Walmart bike. You got a dual crown fork in the front, and this is a very 90s fork in the front. So I don't know how many would know this. I know that I've heard 90s forks are often stiff until they're not, as far as I found. This particular fork, I have the preload on the both the top and the bottom of the uh, second tube here as well. They're all adjusted outwards to the softest position because I'm 140 pounds, I weigh nothing. Similar story with the rear spring. But I will say this actual fork um, is pretty good for what it is. As you can see, I, I have to actually put more weight on it to get it to compress more. I don't think the travel is massive. But it does, it does feel beefier, it looks beefier, it looks better overall, and I think it is a better fork than the Walmart front forks, and I think that is also very much the case for the rear shock here as well. This is a Fox quill shock, and this is definitely an improvement over the Walmart, even if it's from the 90s. The problem with the Walmart quill shocks, as well as their front forks to be honest, at least the ones that are more of the cheaper full suspension deals, like the hyper shock, I guess what you'd call it. It doesn't really feel like it, they don't really feel like they do anything, if you know what I'm saying. I can't even adjust these out on the Walmart bikes to where they actually seem to be effectively absorbing shock until you're hitting something really hard. This just, do, this does feel better. It's not exactly a plush ride. This is not like a modern plush ride, but the amount of control advantage you get from having a full suspension bike is pretty significant. Now obviously this is my rear tail light and headlight and phone mount. This is from REI, um, around $25 and pretty handy to have, especially if you're like me and I like to go around town with this thing, save on the fuel. It came with some 2.3 inch wide knobby tires. They've been fine. I did replace the tubes in each tire because they did, uh, the tubes were old. This was sitting. The only real thing I did to restore everything was I lubed up everything, including the chain, the derailleur. Also, uh, it comes with a cup holder, which was pretty sweet. Didn't have to buy that. Obviously, I have a, I have an honesty preventer. Okay, you know, these locks, obviously, it's just, the most basic, easy to break in bike lock, but it keeps the honest people out, so it's it's nice to at least have that on there. I replaced the seat. The, the seat that was on this thing was old and hard and was, you know, tremendously uncomfortable. And for me, I did not want a saddle that was necessarily the widest possible. 
because this is also a mountain bike, I did want some flexibility, but I also didn't want it to be one of those skinny little crotch rockets. I can't stand those. This is in the middle, which is about where I wanted it to be. It's a Bontrager. It's basically kind of your, I think it's like 180, 160, 175 millimeters or something like that. It's perfectly fine for my skinny ass and I fit on this bike pretty well. Now I'm around five foot nine, 10, give or take, and 140 pounds, very skinny in you know, like a 32, 31. So I'm not the, definitely not the biggest guy that could be riding this thing, but it's a medium frame, 26 inch wheels, which is pretty standard for the time. Now the seats kind of got, uh, I've had the seat to a point where I'm pretty comfortable. I can touch the ground. Obviously you can go lower and higher depending on what you want. And overall, yeah, it's a good feeling back. You can kind of see where the suspension is. So as you can see, it's not, it's obviously not brand new, super expensive air shock suspension. It totally works. And it's much more plush than a Walmart bike. I find that the Walmart bike suspension just doesn't do anything. It's super stiff. And although if you were a lot heavier than me, it would probably do more. It also just has no travel at all compared to something with better suspension, even if it's from the 90s. This has more adjustability. It actually has a reservoir there. And I've, actually, I think this is a good looking bike. Really like that angular aluminum frame design. It looks pretty sweet. Obviously, it's been used, but I don't care. $80, I can set this thing down, which is good because it doesn't have a kickstand. And I tried to get a kickstand from Walmart, but it was the wrong type. So I'd have to get a kickstand that basically bolts onto the side swing arm there. But honestly, I haven't really bothered because usually if I'm riding in town, there's always a fence nearby and I just throw it on the ground because it's cheap enough. This drivetrain is a three by eight. So three in the front or three sprockets in the front, eight sprockets in the back. That's something that's a little more old fashioned is according to my uh, friend who's an actual mountain biker and goes competition, he has new, new multi-thousand dollar bikes. This is something that you would find a little more old fashioned. Usually, uh, oftentimes today, you're gonna find drivetrains that are more uh, one by 12, one by 10, one by 11. So you have one in the front that's a little more stable so you don't have anything to change up there and then you just have it all back there uh, but i dig this it gives me some flexibility it's definitely not the fastest road bike but it totally works because i think the uh, capabilities with the suspension and the tires make up for it because i do like to use this off-road but i also really love to use this in town brakes i think these are called v brakes but i know they just grip on the rim uh, they work they totally stop the bike plenty of stopping power they're so far from a hydraulic disc, but because the bike weighs nothing, I mean, I just stick this thing on top of my Jeep without even a, a bike rack at all, then these basic brakes can totally stop it. It, it weighs so little. And here's the thing about aluminum. This is uh, 7005 aluminum. Let's say that's the type. It is light, and aluminum can degrade over time, but it's weldable, and you don't get that with carbon carbon bike if that splits or if that breaks yeah you're gonna be a more of an expensive repair aluminum see it's all it's all just bead welded you can just weld weld whatever you got back up not to say that that's what you want to have to do you want to, i mean obviously i looked at it but it's in good condition one of the reasons why in my opinion suspension is so useful other than comfort and control is that it, all the punishment that you're taking from rocks it doesn't go up into the frame into the welds it's soaked up somewhere else that energy that pushes on the frame is then soaked up so you don't get the frame being stressed under every single bump not that most frames are that weak enough to where a bump on a hardtail is gonna split the frame, but just to have that absorption, it, it can help uh, keep some strain off certain pressure points in the frame. We're gonna head into downtown real quick. It's this evening. It comes a little bit earlier today, but I went back and back to my camper and took a nap. This phone mount is extremely handy. Dude, this is the same GoPro Hero 4 I've been using for years. It still works. 
I mean, even with newer batteries, it doesn't last very long and there's no stabilization at all, but man, it still works. Brake's still squeaking a little bit. Ozark Trail makes uh, makes like a $400 bike or something around that price, which is pretty decent for the money. Uh, I've heard of it being a decent park town for a switch bike, but I don't know, something about the old style, 90s, kind of like a 90s car, where you just, it's just a little Good thing or bad thing is up to the interpretation. Bro, you, oh my god. Bro's got an air ride in his Jeep on bags. I mean okay. If you wanna be a squatter on a on a JK. <laughs> Gonna get noisy. I'm just gonna wait. I like watching the trains. This is like, this is probably the sixth train I've seen today. And I have not been in town all day. I feel like a 29 definitely would have had uh, some advantages. I mean, I, I don't think you, I think based on what I do know, obviously you can, based on the video, you probably can tell I'm not like a specifically a bicycle expert, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, 26 was just on everything back in this uh, period of biking. And 29 is a newer, newer trend. But man, I, I like the frame size too. Cause actually when I, I was worried that, oh, it's a medium 26, I mean, it might look small, but this is, this is bigger 
Then the Walmart bikes that are also medium frame and 26 inches. I mean, even for small frame, but yeah, I, I just think that this is, this is a better bike. I mean, even just the look of the dual crown fork looks so much better. <laughs> yeah, so an $80 bike, as long as you can get one that's not broken. <laughs> I mean, it depends on whether you want to restore one or work on one, or even if you have an interest at all for getting something from this era. But I think a better older bike versus a newer cheap, cheap low end bike, that's just the way to go. That's the way to go with a lot of things. Anyway, that's enough of my yapping. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what my next video is going to be, so see you in the next one.